Greetings, and I actually do have to get ready for work. However, uh, a little while ago I came across this great video by a young gentleman by the name of Colonel Absconder, uh, entitled uh, Feminists Launch Expansionary Power Grabs in the Atheist and Gaming Communities. <clears throat> a very, very good video, and I thought it deserved a response at the very least. Uh, something I've been meaning to talk about for a while is this, this idea of feminist, atheist, or whatever that means. Now, of course, full disclosure is appropriate. I've been an atheist my entire life, i.e., as long as I could think, I've uh, have maintained a disbelief in the existence of deities. Um, that said, something I've never understood is this concept of an atheist community, after all. Uh, all atheism is is just an assessment of essentially the metaphysical or maybe scientific physical state of affairs in the universe, and uh, that's it, and then you move on. I mean, this is not, I don't wear my atheism on my sleeves for specifically that reason. If you are a true atheist, in my opinion, if you, it's just, it's just a non-issue. It's not something that even enters into your mind once you've made your assessment. Or one, I mean, since I've th thought this my entire life, it's just not something I ever think about. Uh, all my friends in real life are atheists, but once again, they don't think about it, they don't talk about it very much, because for us, it's a given. Why would you ever have the need to form a community around that? It's absurd. And to me, in one thing um, that religionists are right about, I think, is, although not in the way they claim, is that atheism itself is a religion. No, it, the, the, the concept of atheism is not a religion. After all, I'm the most irreligious person in the world, probably. Um, but this forming of groups, the groupism, the tribalism, this need for community, of course, that is a mirror very much of religious organizations. And you know, I think in many cases you know, for religionists, that's, of course, the strong point, this idea of community. Uh, human beings are social animals, after all people need to interact with each other and so of course that's an aspect uh, of it but uh, it, I just wanted to say that that it, I find just absurd this whole concept of an atheist community more even more absurd atheist figureheads I mean prominent youtubers there's just nothing to talk about uh, I mean yes you can have arguments uh, for or against um, but beyond that you, you cannot you cannot have an entire organization and a community that has been formed and come into existence on the basis of um, your lack and belief in supernatural powers. Uh, it's, it's just crazy and absurd. That's my take on that, and uh, I don't want to dwell too much on that, but I, I thought that was important to clarify. So yes, full disclosure, um, don't wear my atheism on my sleeve because it's just, well, not terribly important, and I don't know. But what I really wanted to talk about is this concept of, sort of feminism, female atheism, uh, whatever, however they term it. And uh, Colonel Absconder makes some good points. The things I'm going to talk about uh, really are just an addendum. Now, <clears throat> I've mentioned in the past with regards to gaming, I do want to tie this into gaming, that it is a small minority indeed of female gamers who take an active interest in gaming aspects beyond perhaps story loosely. I mean combat mechanics, strategy, builds, and all of the things that uh, can fascinate a male gamer or a male mind that keeps them playing. Uh, after all, uh, at the moment I'm playing Skyrim with a completely new build I've never tried before. Uh, honestly, no magic whatsoever. I don't want to get off too on a tangent, but a sort of pure ranger using alchemy and uh, yeah, no magic. So, I mean, this is the kind of stuff, of course, that motivates uh, a lot of male gamers, or at least we have an interest in and see how effective it is and what have you. And it is quite difficult without magic sometimes. But that's neither here nor there. But my point is that just as very few women are interested in the uh, in the gaming mechanics of specific games, in the strategies, in the builds, in what I would uh, deem to be sort of the essence of gaming, apart from story, and even then they, well, don't, in my opinion, have a whole lot uh, of interest or much to contribute, apart from complaints that aren't enough women, or uh, fe or femship isn't feminine, uh, or is is not uh, is is a sexist portrayal of women, or who knows, or not female enough, or who knows. Like I said, that uh, very few women 
uh, have interest in metaphysical claims about the universe. I mean, it's just not something that they ever spend time thinking about. And, and admittedly, like I said, since I've thought this m with regards to my atheism um, my entire life, I don't spend any time thinking about it either. But it's something, of course, that I have thought about and can, uh, if need be, think about. And I can also come up with reasons for why I maintain my beliefs. But women generally have no interest in these things. I mean, um, you can argue till you're blue in the face that the uh, you know the various debates uh, starting in say the 17th and 18th century, uh, swinging between some form of theism, then with Spinoza a pantheism, and then some sort of watered down version of theism, and then finally deism, and then I mean, you can you can argue till you're blue in the face that you know if women had been allowed to contribute, they would have written a lot more, but they simply don't have interest in that stuff. I mean, can anyone here imagine a, a a female David Hume? I mean, writing the thing. I mean, I can't. I can't imagine a female David Hume, just as I can't imagine a female uh, Leibniz writing about monads. And we all know that monads are bunk, but at least he took the interest, right? Uh, nor can I imagine a female Descartes who's sitting in front of a candle, talking about the candle, and his uh, in her pajamas, as it were. It's just. And the reason being is that women don't have no interest in these things. So we have this bizarre phenomenon of an atheist community, which is, to me, a, a muck of contradictions. You, you don't have a community fo formed on the basis of some of your disbelief in supernatural powers. But okay, we have this odd atheist community thing, of which I've never been a part and will never be a part. But <sighs> but then you have these female infiltrators, I guess, who who are in it because it is a community, because it has some following, because people you know, gather and garner attention whilst being in it. That seems to be the primary interest of females and feminists in the so-called atheist community. Uh, in fact, uh, it seems to me that that's always the reason. And I think uh, the young Colonel Absconder pointed out uh, quite, quite well and quite intelligently in his video that uh, whenever there's some something that's sort of mainstream, and now atheism is a kind of which is, it just boggles my mind, but it's some sort of a mainstream. Which, uh, of course, females need to get in on it and uh, you know, flash themselves around because they need the attention, just like gaming. They, they need the attention. Uh, of, of, I remember, uh, being 35, I remember the days when gaming was, well, a lot smaller in terms of the c community. I think you speak of a gaming community. Um, you didn't have uh, all these insane females posting about sexes. I mean, it was just very different. And of course, when something goes mainstream, women want a part of it. You know, let me just also mention that there. this is, might not be of any interest to non-gamers, but I'm going to mention this nonetheless, that in all this talk of console wars, you know, of console versus the consolers versus the PC master race, as a uh, teammate and fellow gamer of mine has put it. Well, uh, there's what there's certainly that aspect, sort of a dumbing down. I mean, consoles, you know, they're they're less exacting than I mean, you can do a lot less on consoles than you can on the PC. Put it that way, in terms of game development. But just as the HT Arcade had rather brilliantly uh, pointed out that. Uh, a lot of these applications, uh, iPads, what have you, all these things, really only became popular when they were really simplified and streamlined, and and then we had a female majority using them. That I, I in fact see a simplification of uh, of a lot of gaming aspects and gaming elements uh, to also coincide with the sort of female infiltration, um, the simplification of the classic RPG system. Um, you know, in my opinion, it has has led in part to the uh, the sort of infiltration, the the this 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 female grab for power. I mean, the, the desire to do so. I mean, when when we back in the day were sorting through our in inventories and <laughs> looking which stats are the best. I mean, most women don't do that. They don't have interest. You streamline everything. Uh, prominent example of this. Uh, let's look at 
what used to be my favorite game of all time, or series of all times, and I was I was bitterly, bitterly disappointed to the point of being well, quite upset by this. Mass Effect. Mass Effect 1. Combat was hmm, um, but the story was great, it had a very well thought out RPG system, and it was a very good game overall. Mass Effect 2 was probably the best of the series, combined some of the best aspects, um, and the combat was challenging enough, but not insane that you just didn't want to play at all. Along comes Mass Effect 3, a botched story. The story, I mean, n most recently Leviathan came out, and um, we'll not talk about this here, this is on the gaming channel, but it's a, it's a botched story, a, a poorly told story with bad plot devices. What else do they do? Well, they say they improve combat by, no they don't. They make it so easy that uh, the level, what they call insanity, is the equivalent of normal or easy mode on, on previous uh, Mass Effect games. To me, this is. I mean, they can argue about consoling versus PC and all you want, but because there are more and more female gamers, I think you do need to stream. I mean, that's what the developers think. You need to streamline things. After all, nothing in, in ma male nature has changed fundamentally in the last 10 or 15 years such that it would cripple their ability to play efficiently on difficult, um, on high difficulty levels. No? It's kind of irrational to think that. Um, but of course, females will openly say they're not very interested in the combat, combat mechanics. In fact, I, I used to correspond with a with a female on Bioware social network who talked about uh, Mass Effect occasionally. How how she always claim how disinterested she, she was in the combat. Um, she had no interest in specific weapons, their qualities, things like that. So of course, if you have a a, a growing audience uh, of people and you want to cater to their needs, what you do is you know. This is my thesis, my theory. You don't, it's, it's not consoling, consoles dumbing things down, and that might be part of it, but primarily I think it's, it's the presence of females and women, uh, women gamers who just don't have the same passion, don't have the same interest in the intricacies of things. Um, there are, of course, exce exceptions, and they confirm the rule. I mean, for example, on Test Nexus, where there are a lot of good mods for Skyrim, uh, you do have a lot of uh, female uh, there's a few mods uh, made by females. Mind you, some of the best of these mods, it's, and it's very interesting, you can see that it's textures and meshes, that is the, the graphics, the visuals. The best mods for gameplay mechanics are never made by females, just as an example. So, getting back to the matter at hand, that uh, women don't have an interest in these things for the, for the most part just like uh, with gaming and uh, with regards to gaming and women for the most part don't have an interest in deep metaphysical uh, claims or deep metaphysical questions of the universe it's not really relevant to them women are always interested in the here and now what what brings them immediate pleasure what makes them feel good and of course being the center of attention makes women feel really good they need to be the center of attention whether it's your girlfriend or your ex-girlfriend who admonish you for mentioning a close friend of yours and talking about his job because it didn't interest her and of course it didn't, it didn't uh, revolve around her or it's um, a game that doesn't cater specifically to female needs or uh, atheism which I mean even if you want to create some sort of community out of out of this out of absurdity which in my opinion uh, you're <laughs> What does it have to do with fe females? I mean, why putting putting a, a woman? Yes, I know about the elevator and on a, on a panel. For what reason? To cater to her needs. On a final note, let me mention that I think we I've mentioned this many times before, and I think Girl Rights What has talked about this, and we know this that there are so many people out there, men and women, who have this deeply ingrained, deeply held essentially misandry and preference for females. I mean, we know we know that uh, we that men are expendable and women are valuable. Nowhere is this expressed more than in the writings and the speeches of Sam Harris. Now Sam Harris, for those who don't know, is a, a neuro uh, neurologist sorry, a neuroscientist and a philosopher as well. He 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 writes he has an amazing style. He's a, an excellent writer. He's an excellent speaker. And in particular I I have to say I do subscribe to I mean a lot of a lot of the scientific ideas. Um, he ma he makes some very compelling arguments about free will or lack thereof, and based on neuroscientific findings, and that's all well and good. <clears throat> but when he talks about 
it's, it's funny when he talks about atheism religion he always talks about the oppressed women in the you know in in Afghanistan women have so and so life expectancy uh, women um, suffer and women can get beaten and so on and so forth and, and that's all you hear um, he has this incredibly gynocentric approach to things even in his books when he talks about people they're always females it seems now no one's pointed out to him and I'd love to but I'll never have the opportunity that the 12 year old boy in Afghanistan who's an AK-47 placed in his arms who may, may not live to see his uh, 13th b uh, birth year or, or certainly not grow to adulthood um, that he probably has it a lot worse than, as Girl Rights Sweat had pointed out, if you're going to be a possession, uh, it's better to be a treasured possession than someone you just throw away. And so the difference is between, between say, 45-year life expectancy and a, I don't know, <laughs> a 13 or 14-year life expectancy is pretty uh, great in my opinion. And this is something that annoys me no end. The otherwise brilliant thinker with regards to concepts of free will and, and, and sort of neurology and neuroscience and, and how that interacts with human perception in general. Really fascinating stuff that I would recommend. That he just, uh, Sam Harris, just g totally goes off on this gynocentric uh, angle to things. And it's unfortunate. But it seems this, that most men, and certainly most men and, of course, women, we all favor the female not all of us, most of us favor the female over the male. Of course, we um, ex express our sympathies towards towards the female uh, rather than towards the male. So if, if males suffer in Afghanistan, if they're placed in the form of military conscription at an age when they couldn't even call themselves men, uh, when there's basically young boys still, um, if, if they have to suffer that, we don't talk about that. No, it's the women who are suffering. Just a sort of a gut reaction. Um, but this is a trend which I've noticed. Um, and so to say that it's it's just women um, in the so-called atheist community who are um, sort of bolstering and and and, and buffering uh, this this gynocentrism. No, it's not. It's unfortunately people like Sam Harris, even Richard Dawkins. Although I'm, I think Richard Dawkins on below the surface knows what's up, but. That you know you you can't you, men are 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 enabling. I've talked about enablers, white nighters. Essentially, they're enabling this, um, and that's part of the problem as well. Of course, um, it's it's the the men who are, who are just letting these things fly and say, oh, it's fine. So that was a lot to say. Uh, not nearly as brief as I wanted to be, but I, I do have to get ready for work. Let me just thank uh, the young Colonel Absconder. That is an excellent name, uh, and because I'm about to abscond off into the ether to have a shower and uh, and head off and commute uh, to work on the dreadful uh, train with the dreadful people. So, have a nice day and thanks for watching.